Good morning and welcome back to Adventures with Dice. I'm Rob and I'm your host for these videos. And this is episode 16 of the Rob Rambles videos, which if you have never watched any of the Rob's Rambles videos, there's a playlist on the channel that has the other 15 in it. And um, uh, if you don't know what they are, it's really just me rambling about game stuff, talking about things that are going on in my life. There's no specific content it's literally just me rambling on so uh this is an early access video for my patrons patrons so if you'd like to see videos early you can join my uh patreon link is in the description and you get some access to things that i create for games uh maps uh, magic items and early access videos and i'm going to be doing exclusive videos just for the uh, patreon page as well but we're getting there it's been a minute since i did one of these um videos in general but uh especially a, a rob's ramble video and uh part of the reason it's been a while since i put a video up is well i mean if you've been following the channel you know i was in the hospital uh had to have surgery on my heart again uh, so bouncing back from that and um, on top of the other the flip side of that is I go into different modes and sometimes I go into uh, build sometimes I go into paint mode and then I have to remind myself oh yeah I need to get into video mode and do some videos lately I've been doing a lot of building and by building, I mean printing, because these days I don't buy a lot of miniatures and build them. I mostly 3D print uh, the majority of my miniatures, which I have a video coming up where I'm going to be showing off a lot of the stuff that I've been working on uh, building or printing and painting lately for uh, ICRPG and Basic Fantasy and Call of Cthulhu type games. And I'm going to do a, you know, different camera angle so I can show the miniatures off that I've been doing and, and show you some of the stuff there. Uh, so that, yeah, there's been a lot of 3D printing going on and when I get hung up in that, I tend to, you know, have blinders on and get really focused on it. But I have been doing a lot of printing, uh, like I said, for Basic Fantasy and ICRPG monsters. Um, I also, if you have followed the channel for a while, I have a video from early, I think it was early this year, maybe, uh, not this year, but last year, <clears throat> where I got a copy of Hero Quest and it was missing a lot of the furniture and a lot of the miniatures. So I scrapped all of that um, and started reconstructing the game uh, using SDL files and reprinting all of the furniture and miniatures and stuff for the core game because I have all the books and the screen and all the little tokens and everything to play but needed the core miniature stuff and I am 98% complete I took a break for a while because I didn't print anything for about eight months but I did I have gotten back to it everything is printed 98% of everything is painted. I'm literally just finishing the doors probably later today. And then I'm going to shoot a video uh, showing how uh, how it all looks on the table, on the board, and the pieces that I printed. <clears throat> so hopefully everybody will enjoy that. Um, but that will complete that series because I already did one or two videos on... Um, my reconstruction process of putting the game back together and I could just get the new version of it and I do want the new version of it but you know it's a hundred dollar board game so not happening anytime soon but number two there's just something about those classic models I just want a copy of even if I got the new one I would still want this copy I have of the original with the original uh, at least 3D printed versions of the original models. <clears throat> I 
because I think they'll they'll look really cool. So, what else has been going on lately? Oh, uh, man. <clears throat> We've been doing some gaming lately. I've been gaming with the kids. Ran a one-shot of Xeno's Dead Zone, which is a... You get it for like four bucks on drive-thru RPG. Um, uh, PDF only. But Runehammer put it out. It's a... It's Aliens. Okay? Uh, and... <clears throat> The specifically is uh, heavily inspired by the second movie and it is a board game where everybody can play at one time and it has variable missions and locations you can set up which is really cool but you can also play it the classic <clears throat> ICRPG way which is what we did um, <laughs> and I found out that um, it's probably best to run that for a group that are fans of the movie because I ran it for my kids and, you know, Haley and, and, uh, Haley's a big fan of the Aliens movies, but, uh, my kids are not so much, uh, they are vaguely aware of the Xenomorphs, but they don't really watch the movies. So, uh, it, there's a lot lost in translation if you run it for people who have never watched the movies or don't have interest in the xenomorphs it however was fun it was a bloodbath they had nine characters total going into the game and i think three characters made it to the dropship and made it out alive and they were all wounded uh very badly um i think one of them had like two hit points left by the time they got on the dropship or evac ship whatever but we had a good time with it uh not something i would run every week but it was a good one shot and it was really more of a my older son who's in kansas in the military he was playing with us uh, via the magic of the internet and um he wanted to try out icrpg so we kind of ran that as a one shot so they could try it my Saturday game, if you're following along uh, with my ICRPG Saturday, every other Saturday game, you'll notice there wasn't a video this uh, last week. And there should have been. Uh, and that's because one of our players was away on a camping trip. So there was just three players. And instead of playing without him there, I ran a one-shot for that too. And I ran a one-shot that is in the book in the second edition core book and it's called Beneath the Door. It's a Lovecraftian Call of Cthulhu style adventure. And <laughs> that went horribly. Like we had a blast. We had a great time with it. But we have one guy there who, um, my buddy Jimmy, never heard of H.P. Lovecraft. He's never read any of his work. He doesn't know anything about cosmic horror. So it was interesting and fun at the same time to run a game with someone who was a clean slate going into it. They didn't have any preconceptions about how it should be played. A lot of times when you play a Call of Cthulhu adventure, there are these preconceptions that you go into it and you're like, okay, well, we should be looking for things to investigate. We should be looking for the mystery and trying to solve this. And he was like, nah, I'm just trying to get out of here because this place is whacked and I want, I want to leave. And at a certain point in the game, they, he did. They just took off after they encountered the first monster, really. They just took off. They had a nightmarish night the, the night before in the house that they were in. And uh, him and, and, and the other uh, Tina and Haley's characters, they just fled. And it was funny because that's just, he was playing the character true to self. And I think that there are some key elements to a horror story, movie, game, whatever. And the first one is isolation. Uh, second one would be limited supplies. Third one is imminent danger. And you have all of these, it, the isolation was there because they're trapped up in this house up in the mountains and it's been raining for days and the path out of here is really hard to traverse and they don't have supplies. But there was nothing to stop them from just trying to flee. And if you look at a lot of like the great classic 
horror movies like John Carpenter's The Thing or Event Horizon, any of those things, they're, they're trapped in a location and they can't just leave. So <laughs> I ended up, they just went completely off script and they were like, screw it, we're just taking off down the road. We're, we're going to walk, run out of these mountains. And I was like, okay, well, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, well, I guess the adventure is about to end right here. Um, but I was like, yeah, I'm a good enough GM. We'll wing it from this point. So the monsters pursued them through the woods. They could only get so far because they hadn't had any sleep the night before. They end up finding a cave to get out of the rain and try to get some rest. And that's where my main final confrontation came down. The, the children, Arden's children, attack them. Which uh, Tina and Jimmy's character managed to dodge and they ran. And Haley's character got tentacle lined around the neck and it was attacking her and dropped her like one hit point. And she was talking, she was like, we're all sitting at the table and she's like, I can't believe y'all are just going to leave your friend. Jimmy's like, you ain't my friend. You were just somebody else on the stagecoach with. <laughs> so he just takes off. Uh, they do all uh, finally escape the children. And they're, you know, running down the mountain pass trying to get away. But uh, Azathoth gets summoned and he comes through the door that's beneath the house and um you know tears the world asunder because they did nothing to investigate and stop the uh horrific plans of these these crazy people who were trying to bring this this ancient god into our world which is kind of the point and i understand that it's a little bit meta when you're playing one of these games is you're like okay there's going to be some cultist or something or some crazy person who's trying to bring something about and we have to try to stop it. And they didn't have that mentality. They just wanted to get away. So they continued to run and it ended badly because nobody stopped the crazy guy in the house who was turning himself into a portal to bring Azathoth into the world. So <clears throat> there was, I had made cards and there was a, a, a card that showed uh, him tearing through reality into the sky above the mountains. And uh, essentially everybody died. Now, we had a blast playing it. I mean, we were rolling laughing. And I know you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you shouldn't be, you know, you shouldn't have a bunch of laughing in a horror game. Like, okay, you're very seldom going to find in a horror game that your players are actually sitting at the table quivering with fear. Um, you can set the tone, set the mood, and have fun with it and there may be points where they are in fear for their character but your character is never afraid your players never afraid because you're playing a game and <clears throat> that's essentially what happened here is we just had a really good time with it uh, and it was fun because like halfway through the session I was like all right well I mean you guys kind of went off script and I'm either gonna have to make the rest of this up on the fly or game nights over really early and I chose to just make it up on the fly it worked out we had a good time with it so this Saturday uh, we should be back to normal with our ICRPG campaign which is also there's a playlist with the, the videos for that in it so you can go check that out so it is Valentine's Day 2023 uh, and I'll show you in a few minutes what my wife got me. She's a very loving woman who got me something cool. But I got some other stuff to show off too. Um, my buddy Todd Wilson, he is, he's been a follower of the channel for a long time. We're friends on Facebook. We talk a lot. Um, he sent me this package. And I'm sorry, Todd, that I haven't gotten a video up sooner to show this stuff off. I really wanted to. This I got the package right before... I ended up in the hospital and things have just kind of snowballed and I decided I'm just going to talk about it today. So Todd was going, he's gone and he, he sent me, you know, stuff before, but he was going through his game stuff and had stuff he wasn't going to use. And he just sent me this big box and I had no idea he was sending it. Uh, my wife's like, Hey, we got something, some big package coming in the mail and I'm not going to say where from and give away his location. But she, I was like, I don't know anybody there, and because I didn't think about 
that being where he lived. So this big massive box comes in the mail and I bring it in. I'm like, oh wow, this is from Todd. And uh, it was just a super cool surprise. So I opened it up and it was full of some really neat stuff and I'm gonna show it off here. So the first thing in there was the castle dice tower and DM screens which you assemble and put together and it makes a big DM screen and you can like slide books in the tower things uh, which is neat because this is just the towers the two I mean uh, the two walls and oddly enough I already have the tower section because me and my wife had got it like a year ago so I already have this section so I need to put these together and put it up to use as a GM screen but that's really really cool so thank you Todd that was awesome now, Todd also knows how much I love Alien, or Aliens, so he sent me two books, big, thick Alien novels, which I thank you for, and I will be reading. This one's kind of cool. It's like a, a medieval world that's dealing with these demons, but they're, they're aliens. But I thought that was really neat. The other thing that he put in there, I have wanted to take a look at this for quite some time but I just never picked it up now I get a lot of stuff uh, from Free League they send me stuff periodically to review and whatnot and uh, I had looked at doing this at one point but mainly they send me stuff for Vossen and Alien but he sent me the Forbidden Lands box set and I have heard so many great things about this box set well, let me tell you when you open it he's books I don't know why this is a, a surprise because every book I get from Free League is gorgeous, but these are gorgeous on a whole separate level. So they're hardback books. There was a whistle in my voice right there. That was weird. This is the player's book. Got your nice ribbon and everything there. And then this is the Game Master's book. It's a big, thick hardback. These are in really great condition. I mean, just, just look at that. That's, that's beautiful. Uh, the box set also has Forbidden Lands Adventures or Legends and Adventures booklet in it and a big, I'm not going to unfold it, but a big double sided hex map and stickers to place on it. And uh, as your characters are exploring, uh, which I think is really neat. And I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this, but like you, you open it up and that's gorgeous. And it has a lot of that, that old school black and white art. And if you don't know what Forbidden Lands is, it's kind of Free League's answer to the old school role playing, old school D&D. This one's really cool though. This, I, I love the fact that, you know, you've got your dwarves and elves and all that stuff. But you also have like Wolfkin in there. And I love that because that's one of my favorite things from Palladium is the Wolven. So, uh, I am looking forward to getting a chance to run this for one of my groups. Um, it looks really cool. It is not about being heroes. It is about being rogues and raiders who are in a cursed world and running around and adventuring and going and, and finding stuff that, frankly, nobody else has found in a long time. But, fantastic set. Thank you, Todd. Can't thank you enough. That was such a such a, a, a lovely surprise. It was just amazing. So, what else have I been doing? I have been building stuff for my ICRPG campaign, which there's constantly, this is my GM notebook, which is about a little over halfway full. And it doesn't just have adventures in here. It's got all kinds of, every time I think of a magic item or something I want to put in here, I, it's just got tons of stuff that I end up adding to it and most recently I kind of added uh, I, I finally because I finally put a pantheon of gods in there but the reason that I did it was because I am I like the very old school uh, feel of hero quest which is kind of set the original set in like the old world <clears throat> for Warhammer where you have the gods of chaos. Well, if you have the gods of chaos, you have the gods of law. And a lot of times, 
I'm not going to lie. I'll just be lazy in my fantasy games and be like, well, the people who serve chaos are bad and the people who serve the law are good. So, you know, they're gods, well, you know, di they're different gods, and I'll make them up as needed for stories and tell you which pantheon they're part of. But I finally sat down and created a chaos and law pantheon for my ICRPG Alfheim game. And I'll probably use it for other fantasy games as well. And it has basically gods from different RPGs that I like. Um, I stole what I wanted to. Uh, I had their stuff from ICRPG. There is stuff from DCC, D&D, &D, uh, Warhammer, Nurgle's in there. And I put them in the Pantheon. Cthulhu, there's Lovecraftian stuff in there. Dagon's in there. I just took the stuff that I felt like we would, I liked using, like for Chaos, I like using these different um, dark gods for cultist groups. So I added them to that Pantheon. Now, the way I did it too is like, hey, these are the 10 or 12 gods of this pantheon whether it's chaos or law and these are the ones that you either know about or you've heard of or whatever but understand there are long forgotten gods that can pop up which leaves me that's kind of a writer's trick you know it leaves me an opening to add in any future gods that i decide i really want to and one of the places i stole a lot from is this book right here the DCC Annual Volume 1, there's no Volume 2, I don't know why, but my kids got me this for Father's Day last year, and this is one of my favorite gaming books. Even if I'm not playing DCC, this is one of my favorite gaming books. I'm not currently running a DCC game, but I use information out of here, whether it's random list of items, I uh, used a lot of the gods out of here that I liked, magic swords, weapons, even magic mustaches. It's got really cool stuff in here that I can really translate easily to ICRPG or basic fantasy or whatever. And this is a go-to book that I keep out for all my fantasy gaming. So if you haven't checked out the DCC annual, I say give it a go because it's mechanics wise it has a lot of DCC stuff in here but it's very easy to translate that into other fantasy games the gods are all really thoroughly uh, explained in here their backstories their powers their spells uh, you've got all these cool named magic items especially swords and stuff and it's just a treasure trove of ideas that you can use in DCC ICRPG probably Forbidden Lands as well, Basic Fantasy. I mean, it's just, it's a very useful book. I use it a lot. So I've been spending a bit of time in that. And now the other thing I got is, um, granted I got that last year, but it just stays on my desk because I use it so much. My wife got me my Valentine's Day present. And since it's Valentine's Day, I figured I'd show it off. Um, it's nothing rare but it is something I have been wanting to try for quite some time. And she got me two books. She got me Four Against Darkness, the core book, and Four Against the Great Old Ones. So um, if these are, this is a, Four Against Darkness is a solitaire dungeon delving pen and paper game. And it, you can play it like co-op, like with other players like you do D&D, &D, but it's really designed to be played solo where you create a group of four characters and randomly generate a dungeon and you got all these different like d different dungeon entrances, different rooms you can roll up and you build a dungeon as you go. Um, your information for your characters fits on an index card. There are sheets you can print out to fill out if you want to, but that all fits on there. And then you end up with after an adventure, I did one last night, something like this, and this was my my first dungeon that they went into, and I ended up beating the dungeon, and um, 
after taking some severe damage, they also all managed to hit level two and get some pretty decent treasure. And I'm keeping everything tracked in this notebook. Uh, so that one's really cool though. Against the old ones is same concept, but you're not really dungeon delving. You have different locations that are all Lovecraftian and you're taking your group and going to different locations and you're assessing out clues to put together a mystery and solve it to stop a group of cultists who are trying to raise one of the old ones in 40 days. And I think that's kind of neat. It's actually got a lot more story to it than a lot of, honestly, a lot of uh, random Cthulhu adventures that I've seen. So I haven't played this one yet, but I plan to probably this week sit down and make my investigators for it so that I can. But very, very cool. This one, there are a lot of quest books you can get that have a story built into it. The core book has no story. You're just adventurers going into a random dungeon. So my first dungeon was The Trial. Um, but if you want more story, you can get these other books that will add on to it uh, and give you a either a predetermined dungeon or a predetermined story, like why are you going to do what you're doing? But if you don't have those or you want to generate your own thing, you can get some of these Matt David's books, like the Random Quest, and you can pull up a quest pretty quick and easy for why you're in the dungeon. What is, what is your goal? Another thing you can do is if you don't like randomly generating the dungeons, I've showed this book off before. This is Dungeon Maps 5e. has nothing to do with 5e. They just put that on there to sell it, I guess. But it's just random dungeons that are empty. And you could literally start adventuring and just rolling for what's in each room as you're adventuring through the dungeons, which I plan to do some of that with this too. So that is, that is it. It's a lot of little stuff, but that's kind of what's been going on here lately. Uh, like I said, I'm coming back with a completed HeroQuest video to show how my HeroQuest course set looks when it's finished. And I, uh, I know I have a video coming up uh, about the 3D models that I've been doing to show them off. And after this weekend, I should have another video for the uh, ICRPG Alfheim campaign that I've been running every other Saturday. So all those things are coming up. I'll get them made as fast as possible and get them out there. Thank you for watching. If you hate watching this video, because I know there's at least one of you, then I hope you have a blessed day as well, because I know it irritates you that I'm still alive. So that actually goes to the point that there was someone who actually disliked the video where I was like, hey, I almost died, but I'm back. So I actually had somebody dislike that. I was like, how much of a hate watch, hate viewer do you have to be to watch somebody's video where they almost died and then be like, yeah, I'm mad you're still alive. <laughs> I was like, wow. Oh, but anyway, whatever. Hope everybody has a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Until next time, my friends, good gaming, and good luck, especially to you who is full of hate. You need to see somebody about that. <laughs> All right, I'm out.